Hello and you're very welcome to this edition of Sunshine TV. I'm Gina, your host. On today's show we have some music. We are also out and about in County Wicklow visiting Clisman Caravans. Neil is also visiting Kilmore Quay in County Wexford, finding out what it's like living in a fishing community. But before all of that, we have our beautiful singer Deirdre McCall singing a song that you'll know well called Edelweiss by Rogers and Hammerstein. Thank you Deirdre, I'm sure you all enjoy that song. Deirdre will be joining us in future shows. Now over to Neil, out and about in Kilmore Quay, County Wexford. Tell us a little bit about Kilmore Quay, because essentially this is really a small fishing community. Very much so, we're 100 miles south of Dublin, the southeast, right in the southeast corner of Ireland, we're quite quite proud of the village. It's uh, it's been around for quite a while, and you'll see with the thatched roofs that we've been untouched by war, because the first thing that happens in war, they burn your house, and of course the thatch. Fishing is the lifeblood of this village, as well of course as tourism in the summer, or people who like to come down for a day to see the village and. We have a village of about 800 people and the village is sustained by the fishing activities at sea. We have 25 trawlers, beam trawlers mostly in this harbour, steel vessels that pull two nets and bring in the fish den, monkfish and megram and turbot and brill and cod and whiting and all the, any species that they can. So Joe, you've been involved with the lifeboat service here in Kilmore Quay for over 30 years now. Well, I'm just recently appointed LOM, which is the Lifeboat Operations Manager for Kilmore Quay Lifeboat Station. So basically, if the Coast Guard get a distress message, uh, they request a launch, so that comes to me. So I just tell them then to press the buttons to alert the crew. The lifeboat here in 
Kilmorkey is a Tamar class lifeboat. It cost about three million euro and was funded by a legacy from a woman called Mary Weeks. The lifeboat in Kilmorkey is on average is called out about um, 30 times a year. Basically it's a 24 hour service. It's all voluntary except for the mechanics who are paid to maintain the station and the, the lifeboats. But all the crew are voluntary. We have about we have, in fact, 24 on the panel here. Uh, two women are amongst that 24, and they all have pagers, and once the alert goes up, when six people arrive, off they go. It's part of this village that is a small village of 800 souls about. As you can see, we have a big fleet of trawlers here. We have about 25 trawlers made up of beam trawlers, scallop trawlers, conventional trawlers, stern trawlers. We have uh, whelk boats and razor fish boats and we have about 40 crab and lobster boats. All the fish comes back to here. There's two, um, three fish processing plants in the village and they export them. A lot of the fish would go to Spain. Barcelona, in fact. Okay, so with, with 400 out of the 800 people who make up the community involved in fishing, whether it's on boat or in, in the factories, in the processing factories, if a disaster happens at sea, it's more likely going to be somebody who's losing a brother, a son, a sister, a wife, a husband. Very, very much so. Yeah, it's a huge downer for the whole locality. And in fact, last, um, late last year, we, one man was lost, um, Paddy Barry. And um, so the whole fleet were out searching with the lifeboat and people from other parts of the coast as well. When there's disaster then or tragedy, everyone comes together very, very quickly and quietly and they go about their business. Yeah. Did I see sea lions in the harbour out here? You did, yeah. They breed on the salty islands and in October, November times there would be hundreds of them there. But a few of the cleverer ones, um, they get free fish from the boats coming in, or particularly the angling boats, they will throw them in odd mackerel. If there's one thing that you could tell somebody about the lifeboat service here, what would that be? It, it gives so much comfort to the people on the shore to know that there's a life service in the harbour and they're ready to go at a minute's notice. Joe, thanks very much. I wish you the best of luck with the lifeboat service. I hope we never have to use you. The sunny southeast always looks amazing. Thank you, Neil. Now we have some singing by the wonderful Rebecca Rogers.
So make now the dish and my best spoon. I'll play in hide and seek just behind the moon. Wait there until it's time to show. Spring is like that now, far beneath the snow, hiding in the place where the So sleep can come around, for when you dream you'll find all that's lost is found. Maybe on the moon, or maybe somewhere new. Maybe all you're missing lives inside of you. So when you need a touch and loving gaze, Gone but not forgotten is the perfect phrase. Smiling from a star that she makes glow. Trust is always there, watching as you grow. Find her in the place where the Thank you, Rebecca. It's always lovely to hear you sing. Sunshine TV want to hear from you. If you have any stories, poems or artwork that you'd like to send, please email us at sunshinetvireland at gmail.com. We have some lovely Sunshine TV mugs to give away. Now we have Poetry Corner, where today I'd like to say a poem for you. The poem is by poet John Clare and it's called On a Spring Lane. On a Spring Lane by John Clare A little lane, the brook runs close beside and spangles in the sunshine while the fish glide swiftly by and hedges leafing with the green spring tide from out their greenery the old birds fly and chirp and whistle in the morning sun the pilewort glitters neat the pale blue sky. The little robin has its nest begun, and grass green linnets round the bushes fly. How mild the spring comes, the daisy buds lift up their golden blossoms to the sky. How lovely are the pingles and the woods. Here a beetle runs, and there a fly rests on the arum leaf in bottle green and all the spring in this sweet lane is seen. Neil is visiting Clisman Caravans down in County Wicklow. So have you ever wondered what it's like to go around Ireland on a caravan? Now's your chance to find out. Yes, so I've seen these caravans in my youth on the roads up and down the countryside of Ireland. It's a very unique way to holiday around Ireland. Um, well, we rent them out on a weekly or four day basis and it's a way for people to get out into the countryside. Um, a kind of a green, eco-friendly way at a slow enough pace but with enough adventure thrown in to make it good fun. Um, and people like to just get out, get into the field, let the kids run around. The freedom of it all I think is what appeals to people. What sort of person does this appeal to? 
It's very hard to say because it's a real mix. We have families with young kids and they want the kids to really get involved in the holiday, have a really fun experience that they'll remember. Um, with honeymoon couples who want something just a little bit different, it's very private and it's quite romantic an idea. We get groups of friends who want that fun Irish experience with a bit of pubs and music, that kind of thing, but a fun activity during the day. Um, and then we get groups of scouts and all sorts of things like that. We get a mix, a real mix. Predominantly, we get some Irish, but predominantly overseas. Um, a lot from the UK or otherwise mainland Europe and it's people just looking for something different a real sense of adventure and I suppose going home with a story to tell your friends that you know not everyone else has done this or can you tell us a little bit about the history of these caravans? These caravans um, typically would have been used by the travelling community um, and likewise the type of horse that we have and we actually still buy horses from some of the travelling community who you know, have a great skill in teaching them how to, to pull these caravans. So they would have originally been proper dwellings. What we offer obviously is a slice of that really just for a week. Okay, so what does one get inside one of these? What, what does the package entail? It's more a glorified tent on wheels than your typical camper van. So it's fairly basic and yet it has all the needs for a self-catering holiday. So you have um, a bench at the back and, and benches to sit on the table and you have the full cooking facility. So you have two gas rings and a grill and then all the plates and cutlery and everything are included. So in that sense, it's self-catering. And then the various benches and tables and chairs become beds at night. So they're sleeping for four or if you have children, five for a bunk. Where did the idea of this all start from? Um, Dad started in 69. He had been working for Tours Marnd in Frankfurt for some time, so was familiar with the product because other people in Ireland were offering it. And they were based uh, um, travelling community caravans that were you know, the original basis of caravanning with a horse pulling you along. Um, but it was a holiday product at the time, but he decided to move back from Frankfurt. I think really for us kids to grow up more in the Irish countryside than um, in the Frankfurt city centre. And we've been going ever since, so it's generation two now, trying to give it a go and, and bring it forward for, I suppose, new generations of visitors as well. But like that, we get people who were with us in the 70s who came back last year, so it's been going 45 years this year. So there's a lot of repeat business in there as well then? We get repeat year in, year out, and then we get repeat where they've been with us 30 years ago and, and then they've come back generation two. We get kind of grandparents with their kids and their grandkids. A lot of people do it as kids. And then when they have their own kids about the same age, they like to, to repeat it and let the kids have the same experience. And then we have a Swiss man who's with us 27 years this year. So he has his favourite horse and he has his favourite places to go to. And it, it's an annual thing for him. So you get a good mix. How many caravans and horses do you have on the go then? We have 30 caravans and 30 horses. Um, so it's quite a big operation. Um, some of our horses, when they're older, they retire with us. So we're operating at about 20 to 25 at the moment. Um, but the horses stay with us once, once they've retired. So we have a few more horses than those that are actually working. Tell us about this French family. I, I find this absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Um, well, we had a lovely French family, Parisian family, and the daughter was really into horses um, and had a dream about trying out these horse caravans. I imagine from reading them in a book, that kind of idea. And um, so she really wanted to do it, but maybe maybe the whole family weren't quite geared to sleeping in the caravan and going fully back to basics in that sense. So they stayed in Ritz-Carlton every night and they taxied back and forth to their caravan. Um, and so everyone was happy. The, the daughter got her horse caravan experience and yet the parents had the comfort and the luxury of the nice hotel every night. So what does the future hold for Glissman Horses and Caravans? Um, well, I hope another 45 years, ideally, if we can, if we can go for that. So we have a second product at the moment, which is walking with a donkey. So the donkey carries um, 15 kilos of a pannier, which is essentially like a Ryanair bag. And you go from B&B &B to B&B. &B. So you have a slightly more comfortable overnight, let's say, than the caravans, a little bit more luxurious. Um, but you get to visit the main attractions of Wicklow and you have a donkey in tow for um, a bit of entertainment and a bit of help for your bags, predominantly for the entertainment factor, I think. Nessa, thanks very much for your time. Now it's time for our general knowledge quiz. We have questions 1 to 10. You'll enjoy the quiz, but if you can send your answers to sunshinetvireland at gmail.com, we have prizes to give away. Question number one. What was the name of the famous English four-piece band that came out of Liverpool? And here is a hint. Named after an insect. Question number two. What was the name of the first James Bond movie released in 1962, starring Sean Connery and Ursula Andrews? 
Question number three. Which Alfred Hitchcock scary movie was released in 1960 with the famous shower scene? Question number four. What movie won the Oscar for the best picture in 1965, starring Audrey Hepburn and Rex Harrison? Here is your hint. A phonetics expert takes on the challenge of showing a Cockney girl how to speak like a duchess. Question number five. In 1960, the most powerful earthquake ever recorded, 9.9 .9 on the Richter scale, was where? Question number six. In which year did the show Sesame Street first air on television? Question number seven. What year was the famous Woodstock Festival held? Question number eight. The first woman in space came from which country? Question number nine. Which classic science fiction show began in 1966? Question number 10. Who did John F. Kennedy defeat in 1960 to win the presidential election? That's all we have for you on this edition of Sunshine TV. Don't forget to send your quiz answers to sunshinetvireland at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing you on our next show.